All right. That was amazing. No, we're good. You could do your own magic <laughs> ASMR. It's, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. All right. So what are we talking about? Welcome to Freshly Brewed episode 87, I believe. We never know. We never know what episode this is. I'm going to check right now. It's magical. Is it magical, though? 86. Well, I think what happens with 86. Welcome to Freshly Brewed episode right. 86. Um, I am your host, Ali and Trazi. I'm here with Ali and Trazi. Uh, and it's the Ali and Trazi yep. show. So we have that going for us. It's the AAA show. Triple What's A. What's the third A for? Ali and Trazi. Ali. I see your dog in Nailed the background. It. Well, he is in the background. So that's that's good. What up, what up dog? Oh, what up, dog? So he's, he's, what up, he's guys? He's having a good time. Um, so. You... Uh, played in the Open this past weekend. You played in... It was a team event. Good. And you played with Justin Parnell and Steve Mann. And you guys made it to the top four. Yeah, we made it top four. Um, Steve Mann was playing standard. He played Teamer Black. Like you do. Yep. Teamer Black. It's basically um, like the uh, like the, the cons of Tarkir standard. Where it's like, I'm play Abzan Red. I'm going to play Abzan Blue. Yeah. I'm going to play Teamer Black. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so... Go on. Yeah, he, he played energy. He played energy. Uh, Justin was our legacy guy. He played Sultai Delver. Yeah, Sultai mm-hmm. Delver. And then I played Jessica Control. But it wasn't like Jessica Control, like Spell Queller, Guy Saint Trap Control. It was like one Snapcaster Mage and two Gear Hulks. And then everything else was spells. Everything else was spells. Spells all the way down. Yeah, I had three Search Frost Contest. Okay. Oh, that's actually pretty good. And this is modern? Yeah, at yeah, Ooh. at two glimmer, at two glimmer of genius. Go on. We're still, we're still, we're still in This is spicy, man. And then I had two gear hulks. Okay, well that seems Which that's pretty modern. normal. Well, actually, two is two is more than one. Two is a lot more than so one. So those those you would say you're only mentioning those because those are all the new additions. Uh, yeah, those are the new new additions. Outside of that, everything else is. I mean, secure the waste, but I think that's pretty established. Kind of. Uh, I don't think you see that much secure the wastes. Okay, well, think twice too. So I think you do see like usually one or two think twices. And also Nahiri, people are playing one one Najani Benjir. I went with one Nahiri. I think that's fine. You don't have Emrakul. You don't have Emrakul though. No Emrakul. No Nahiri is just. I want her because she she kills random enchantments and also exiles reality smashers and kills artifacts, where Najani Benjir does not. And uh, also, Nahiri is a good like way to filter your draws, so that's cool. That also, did you ever get to, ever also, get to discard a thing twice with Nahiri? Value. Oof. Or if you ultimate, you don't kill them automatically with Emrakul, but you do kill them with Gearhulk because you play Gearhulk, you like flashback a Glimmer, then Gearhulk, then Gearhulk goes back to your hand after after you attack with it, so you can play it again, then flashback Cryptic Command. That's basically game over. <laughs> like, if you ult Nahiri, you're still winning. I, you're not getting you're not getting Emrakul, but you're still doing. Ton of stuff. I did some iconic masters drafts last night, and my opponent, one of my opponents, had cryptic command, and I was like, "Card's broken." It's obviously not oh, broken, man. but it's very good. It's a very good card. Yeah. So is yeah. Cryptic command is good. Cryptic command is great. It, it does so much stuff. What? Okay. So you played Jess guy. Steve played Teamer Teamer Black. And yeah, I I made him play Bolus and sideboard. Rightfully so. I think that's fair. I would also play Bolus on the sideboard. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, I think it's a good top end card in standard. Yeah. I don't know if that's correct, but it feels good. Like, it's a powerful card. Well, when he cast it, I couldn't stop laughing, so it must have been right. What, um, okay, what did Justin Parnell play in Legacy? He played Sultan Delver. The only, I think he played uh, one Tombstalker, though, which is So you basically cool. all play and blue, he... which is cool. Yeah, yeah, I'll play blue. Right on. Call us a blue team. I, I'm not going to do that, but yeah, people could if they wanted to. So you're in, the first place deck it says was you're in the Dylan you're in the chat too, aren't you? Hmm? You're in the chat. Are you, are you reading the yeah? A okay, because like, well, you keep you keep looking over and like you, then you then you pause for a minute. So I'm like, what's he doing? What's he doing? Oh, I'm looking over at the deck lists. I have two monitors. Oh, ah, okay. So okay, that makes sense. Go ahead. Continue. You said Dylan Donigan. Oh, Dylan Donigan actually beat him in the top four, but our team did not carry over. <laughs> Typical. And, 
and that well that feeling is so weird like it's it's one thing to like lose in top four you're like okay i lost whatever it's another to like lose but you didn't lose and get, like but it's like it's, yeah but you you win like, yeah like you win you're like oh my god we got, we, we got this i look over steve man has a scared about him play i'm like oh my god we're gonna we're gonna win this then, then he loses and i'm like wait wait what's what happening advancing? right now so yeah. weird. like you're like but i won i don't understand that seems like it's, it's yeah, gotta it's be pretty just, conflicting i mean that's a, like yeah i played the team events and it's very it's very much the same thing where it's like and it's like you want to be upset because you won like you pulled your weight but at the same time you're a team and that's not how that works so you can't correct yeah, it's yeah. frustrating no, yeah it's frustrating but it's not so it's it's a weird it's a weird dynamic that like if you guys yeah, haven't you, played in team events you definitely should yeah it was very weird that dynamic is like that happened throughout the uh swiss which was fine but um in top four it was just so weird because dylan's and i get dylan's match and match we played was just so so close and i nearly won then then when i looked over um Steve was winning, right? But then he got his scared god commit to memory, then like you do. Gear Hulk commit to memory, and like you do, and that was it. So, um, how do you feel about your decks? Like, would you make any, make any changes? Like, do you think you played uh, the right the right decks, the right deck configurations for the three of you guys? I think we had the best player for each section, like for each a format. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Justin was going to change some things about his deck. Uh, I think he wanted to second Tombstalker. Steve Mann was going to change a couple things about his deck. Can't remember exactly what, what he was going to do. And I wanted to add, um, like, about, like, three... I think I wanted to add three Serum Visions, three serum visions to my deck just to smooth out some, smooth out some draws. Like serum, even though how many, how many Snapcasters you got in there? Just one. Just one Snapcaster? Yeah. yeah. And then I have two Fatcaster Mages, though. Okay. Do you like Serum Visions <laughs> or Opt better? Um, that's tough. Because it's like a draw one random card and then scry two or scry one and draw potentially speed. a card you want. I think early on, I just want Seer Visions just so I can hit right, my lands. because you don't need things in the early game. Right. And then late, maybe it's late. Doesn't, late, late game doesn't matter, but... Um, late game doesn't matter. Late game always matters. I'm saying between Seer Visions and Op, it's not that big of a difference, late game. I think I think ops is slightly better late game, but early game I think you want standard vision just to ensure you hit land drops or your or non lands whatever you need. What I like about uh, opt in in you know uh, as opposed to serum visions is that there's a lot of times in modern where in the later turns you want an answer like you want something very specific, and serum visions will never get that for you. It will tell you what you're going to get what you might get next turn, but it never you can never say like oh I really need a wrath of god here. Let me try to find one with with opt, and you could potentially get it that turn because you're looking too deep. I mean, serum visions lets yeah. you technically look three deep, but not you know you don't get the the fruits of that labor until the next turn. You know what I mean? If, absolutely, yeah. It's, you, it's 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 delayed. Yeah. So I mean, I think that's why I lean towards opt, and that's not even taking into consideration the um, snapcaster rage synergies. Whereas uh, you could EOT Snapcaster and then Opt, which is much more relevant than being having the main phase Snapcaster Serum Visions. Absolutely. But, I mean, like you said, if you only have one Snapcaster and you have Torrential Gear Hulks, like, I think it's fine. Like, you're not going to... I don't know if Opt is your primary target for for flashing back, so... Yeah, my thought process was my Snapcaster Mage Opt play was more so a just a Glimmer. Like, Glimmer is basically just preordained times two. Not times two, I guess. It's scry two, draw two, so it's it's a preordained by instant speed, and you get draw you get draw another card, and that was uh, obviously the, the energy does not matter. I have no way to use energy in my deck, but that doing doing that alone, like limit is powerful in standard, but doing it in modern was extremely powerful as well. Like you can is, filter, filter through so is much. Is there no better card than glimmer in like modern? Is is like glimmer like the best four mana draw spell in would it be in modern too? I think so. Like That's the, the weird, only other, right? other one I could think of was um there was Steam Augury. That card's like just poop. Yeah, it's not. And there it's was, not really the same. What about factor yeah. fiction? Can we just get factor fiction back in modern? That would be insane. I would I play would that. Play the heck, the, Absolutely. I did in my in my iconic masters draft, the second one I did last night I had two Kaigas, so that was pretty cool. Kaiga sweet two. Yeah. Two of them. Dang. It was hard to deal with. He's He's the, uh, what star is he? 
Uh, the Tide Star, right? Right. Tide Star. Oh yeah, he's bringing the tide. Bringing the tide. So yeah, we, we won waves. that draft. That was pretty sweet. So you guys can check that out on YouTube if you'd like. Um, so I, I I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I I understand what's happening right now. Um, so Just how are you feeling about um? So I mean, what did you get for what do you get for top four? What's top four payout? I think we got uh. Fifteen hundred dollars each or total? I think it was total. Actually, I don't even know. I was just upset that we won first place. Oh my <laughs> that was god, so important. dude! Each does, I should, I should... total doesn't sound very good, right? No, it doesn't. I like that you and don't no know. Splits. That's kind of hilarious. You're like, I don't know, something. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, uh, I just wanted to win. Oh but, yeah, last but... night, uh, illusions donate GG. My friend Robert in the chat mentioned that last night uh, our opponent played a rampaging Bayloth. And mm-hmm. we actually Doombladed our own Kaiga to steal their Rampaging Bayloth. And then we had we had Bounce Lands. So we, we played a Bounce Land and just kept returning it. So we'd always have a land to play. So, so oh, we man. just kept making 4-4s. Four that's that's kind of that's gross, pretty, actually. It was pretty disgusting, yeah. I was a fan. And the format seems like, good. Like, Iconic Masters is... So it's funny because during the stream I kept calling it a cube. I'm like, I wonder why they put this in the in this cube. And then Mike was here drafting with me, and he was like, uh, "It's not a, it's not a cube." And I was like, "Oh, you're right." And it's interesting because um, I think all the master sets always have that cube kind of feel because the cards are inherently more powerful, so you're able to do more things. You're able to get out of more situations that you might not be able to otherwise. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it's interesting because. You know, that's those are like the formats that I have the most fun playing, because like y- there's more interaction, right? Like Doomblade kills anything, so there's not a situation where they have a five five and you have one of the four three damage spells in the format, and you're like, I literally just can't do anything against this. Like, there's tons of things you can do. There's like good card draw, there's good removal, there's good creatures, and uh, like our opponent had, <laughs> our opponent had the win on board. We went to like some ridiculously low life total and had like primeval titan and kiki jiki and they copied their primeval titan and i had exactly lethal on board we had like 14 and they were at 14 and i was like well they have a primeval titan to block so i have to find an answer so i played a mass the components i drew three cards one of them was claustrophobia i tapped down the primeval titan and then i attacked for the win and i was like that was amazing like this is <laughs> it's, just, it's weird because right it's like it's a weird situation that you probably wouldn't be able to get into on a regular in a regular draft simply because the power level is so low you know yeah like, absolutely a higher power level is good because not only are the, the threats stronger but the answers are, are are similarly stronger does that make sense yes yes uh, yeah so like yeah your opponent could have a 2-4 flyer in Kaladesh and you're just never able to deal with it you're like I just can't deal with this 2-4 flyer I can deal three to it, but there's no other good answers. So, right, and like not usually in cube or iconic masters, there's just powerful sets. You have like so many ways to. I mean, you have like Mandrain available to you. Obviously, it's a rare, but like there's a lot of cool. There's a lot of powerful things you can be doing. There are a lot of powerful things. No, oh, I'm very powerful. Got them. Anytime I come to a match, I sit down. I look my opponents in the eyes like this. <laughs> and I'm like, my name is Ali Antrazi. I'm a very powerful planeswalker. Do you know who I am? Do you wish to con- do you wish to concede? <laughs> that's, that's what I asked. That's what I said. Even in round one, I'm like, do you wish to concede? And they're like, no, dude, it's round one. Let's just play. Yeah, they, they, they look at me like I'm crazy. Then then we just play. I'd like to think that every time you do that, if if someone's played you before, they're like, here he goes again. This guy's <laughs> weird, and he needs to be taken out of this out of this SCG tour. No, I would never do that. If I did that, like. Someone might, someone might take me seriously. You definitely don't have the audacity I'll, to do that. I know you. No, someone would, someone would probably think of like a douchebag and be like, well, who's this douchebag Ollie? God, like, that guy just asked me to concede on the, in the first game. Right, I'm just joking. Like, I might be serious, but someone might think I'm serious, so I'm not going to do it. Yeah, well, there's no well, there's no reason to do that. So, I mean, like, there, <laughs> See, like there's look, no, ben- there's no tangible Kermit, benefit to you doing that. Even Kermit said it was scary. He was scared. Yeah, he was like, oh my god, this is scary. <laughs> um, yeah, so even Sarah C says, call a judge. There you go, we're gonna call a judge if that happens. Yeah, if someone looks me in the... Well, I mean, like, it's not illegal to ask your opponent if they want to concede, because that's, like, that's traditionally I what know. you do. Like, so if there's a, a situation where one of you is going... If you're both gonna draw, but if the if the natural progression of the game, one of you would have won, it's very customary to be like, listen, I'd probably win if time, you know, if, if, if time wasn't a factor. Would you like to concede? 
And that, like, gives them the option to either say yes or no so that, like, it's not awkward and you're not bribing them. And you're not like, hey, I'll give you prizes if you concede. You just have to ask them and be like, would you like to concede? Right, right. About, I'm always just totally joking. Like, I yeah, oh, like, obviously. I'm not like asking them to concede. I was just coming Yeah, you don't go into round one and be like, here we go. Would you like to concede? I know. It was... But I said I'm on a powerful planeswalker. Like I'm going there, into the whole, the whole lore thing. Oh, uh, is there a is is there a possibility for you to give them a nice wink at the end, like, like this, like this? Would you like to concede? Yeah, if you did okay. that to me, I'd be like, well, I didn't want to, but then you winked, and I was like, <laughs> okay, you got it. Um. Yeah. So that's <laughs> I, I I like based on what you did right there. I like the dynamic that this that the that the live stream adds to the podcast because. Uh, you probably couldn't do that with the same effect uh, oh, no. and, and audio only. Let me ask you something. What's this yeah. What's this picture of cats on the door you got here? Oh. Because that's, looking, like that's that looking pretty cute, man. Out of all the things in the background, that's the one you, you, you noticed? Well, yeah, that's the one that's unfamiliar to me. I know these other things. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, this one is it's uh, it's two cats. Right. One's a male, one's female. Obviously represents... Amberly and I, my girlfriend, my girlfriend. Did you and say I. obviously represents. Obviously, I'm not sure yeah. it's that obvious. <laughs> they're, they're wearing one's wearing a, a a lumberjack red white striped. What do you call it? What do you call this? Plaid, plaid? yeah, plaid or shirt. flannel. Yeah, they're both wearing flannel type right, stuff. Right, so. yeah, because yeah. why wouldn't they be right? Yeah. Then I have Karn behind me. Tamio and Nicobolus are beside me. Then I have uh my token here let me show you i'm gonna be on yeah i like that a lot actually i think that's sweet that they gave you that big one unless you made that yourself in which case that, that is just sad uh justin parlon made it actually he made it for me and then he gave it to me for my birth for christmas that's super cool i think is it yeah. made of vinyl is it the same vinyl as the other ones yeah that's the same, sweet. same that's gotta be pricey man. that's probably like 100 bucks right yeah 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 probably, did you ask him like really like how much you spend on this uh no i didn't ask tell him. me what the price of my gift fine. was <laughs> tell me right yeah, now yeah that's not awkward at all people people do that that's a thing so no, nice. malevolent loki in the chat says i'm about to install mtgo do you wish to concede does that apply to all future <laughs> matches that we may or may not play in because if so mm, i'm not sure well who's conceding is he conceding himself am i conceding your magic online install because that would be interesting oh that'd be great hmm. Hmm. No, I should say that. I should say that. Well, I didn't. You know, we could have let that one go. You, you met. You made it. You, I think you made it more negative than it came across by confirming that that's what you meant. <laughs> well, I'm. I'm. I'm kind. Of, to be fair, I am excited for MTG Arena. I'm, re I'm ready for that. I'm ready for the arena. I don't know how I feel about MTG Arena. I'm excited well, for the idea like of MTG Arena. I'm excited for the idea of being able to play Magic on Magic, Magic Digital Magic on my phone and on my tablet. And anywhere else that I can theoretically play Hearthstone or Elder Scrolls Legends. However, that is not the same as being able to play Magic on my phone or my tablet. You know, like, I mean, I I, I love the idea of it. I'm just looking at Magic Online. I'm looking at Digital Magic's track record. And I'm like, oh, you got to prove it to me. Yeah, but now you don't have to do poop on hold. You can actually go to the restroom. Well, no, not you. No, but you magic. can't now. Not yet. Not yet. Right, and that's my but, point. But like my day. point is that one when day. this day comes, I'm I'm skeptical. I'm I'm oh, okay. I have optimistic skepticism. Is that a thing? That's what I have. You're a non you're a non believer. I'm a believer. Shun the non believer. Well, Shun the non believer. <laughs> can't go into Candy Mountain, Charlie. Um, yeah. the problem is that like exactly. It's a real fool me once, shame on shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me situation where it's like, well, you know, I played Magic Online since it was since it was out, like for probably like 15 years since like Kamigawa block. You know what I mean? And Kamigawa. Yeah. Kamigawa. Okay. And it's like I've seen what Wizards invests and puts into their digital initiatives and I'm hoping that's not the case anymore. I'm just hoping that it's not. And I don't have reason to believe it is. But I'm still like, I've been hurt before, Magic Online. I've been hurt before. <gasps> you know? You know what I'm saying? How? Where did, where did it touch you? Uh, It was around the mouse. Oh, man. Yeah, there's a lot of clicking. Well, that's tough. That's so. tough. 
How do you? Ha- yeah, that's tough. Speaking of tough, unstable. Is that what it's called? Unstable. I yeah. can never remember the name because I'm like un, unset, un, unhin. I don't know what it's called. Okay, unstable. Good to know. I probably won't forget that now. I probably will forget that now. Well, it's like it's like you. It's like you are very unstable. <clears throat> this is how you're gonna be. Yeah. This is where you want to be when Muhammad comes back. Is he coming back? I mean, eventually he probably will. God, why are you like this? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go to... Uh, I can just go to Mythic Spoiler. That seems like the most easy place to uh, check these. Yeah, me too. Have you seen these, like, hinged cards? Hinged? I don't know. I don't know if they're hinged or not. Um, the cards that, like it's, like... it's like two halves of cards, you know what I mean? Oh, the... I don't know why I called them hinged. Yeah. The, the, augment, the, augment, the augmented cards. Yeah. Where it's like you'll literally put like, it's got like a, a line drawn through one, like a tube, and like one's a horse and one's a hydra, a hydra horse. Yeah. These are pretty sweet. Are they? Are they not? I think they're just, I think it's too much, personally. Too much? Yeah, like, I like the other cards. I like the the sweet legendary creatures. Like, I mean, that's the the guy, the, the clock guy. Okay, but see, here's the thing. Um, you don't have to only like one thing. You know what I mean? Nope. That's okay. It. Well, in my face, I guess. I so so having gone to um, having gone to Mythic Spoiler for the first time, I've realized that there are five different um like teams, like groups. You have the Order of yeah. the Widget. You have Agents of Sneak. League of Dastardly Doom, Goblin Explosioneers, and the Crossbreed Labs. Yeah. This set looks insanely fun to draft, and I'm tempted to buy a bunch of boxes of this solely for the tokens and the lands, <gasps> but also and like the fun is just gonna be secondary to that. Alright, so who's 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 your favorite group? It's probably League of Dastardly Doom. Ah, yeah, mine's mine's that. However, I think it's very close with Agent Agents of Sneak. However, the first card under Crossbreed Labs is Dr. Julius Jumble Morph, and it's a dinosaur yeah. in a lab coat, and that yeah. makes a real big that's a that's a strong case for um <laughs> for for the Crossbreed Labs. That's I'm that's all I'm saying. That's true, but we have Baron von Count. That's true. Baron von Count. Well, Baron von Count, it, it, it's I like Baron von Count because it harkens back to like every popular villain. So you have like Baron Zemo. Doctor Doom, uh, Victor von Victor von Doom, I'd say. Um, yeah, you know the Count. Oh, oh, oh. No. No. Okay. Well, we had a good talk. But no. But go ahead. He, it says it says destroy target player. It does say destroy target player, which is utterly insane. Well, does that mean door nothing door to nothingness is going to be errata to destroy target player? Ooh. I don't know if that's the same though, because if you can give yourself indestructible, I don't know. Maybe uh, you know what? It's reaching. Oh, you're right. You're right. There are some cards giving indestructible. Yeah. Or yeah. You're right. You're right. I mean, I'm not sure if that makes a difference, but it does. But there's some someone hinge card that gives you indestructible. I'm gonna look at this right. mythic Doctor Julius Jumble Morph right now, and he says it is a two green white oh, dinosaur. Actually, oh, it's a legendary creature, and it had no creature type. And I was like, why doesn't it have a creature type? Dr. Julius Jumble Morph is every creature type. <laughs> Even if this card isn't yeah. on the battlefield. Whenever a host enters the battlefield, which is one of the augment cards, under your control, you may search your library and or graveyard for a card with augment and combine it with the host. Oh, that's insane. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. So it's a 4-4 four, for four, 4. And whenever you can just play any host and get any augment card for free. Yeah, it's that's great. That's crazy. These are all fantastic commander cards, I think. They're so Amazing. They're also super the fun commander. cube cards. Yeah, but they're not legal in commander or cube unless you like. They're not legal. Make what sure are you talking about? You... There's no, there's no sanctioned commander list and cube list. But 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 there's like a rules list. Like there's no cube like list. If you there's made... no cube rules list. But if you made a let's say you made a Barry Bond count commander deck, and you took it to like let's say a Star City Open or a GP, and you played a side event for your commander. You can't do okay, that. Okay, sure. That uh, sucks. That's like that's, but that's as close as you're gonna get to like a sanctioned commander event, right? I'm talking about if you take this to your home game, or if this ta- if you take this to your local store, where it's a more controlled environment, 
you're much more likely to be like, yeah, let's, you, you know, you're going to, you, you're going to have your own groups, your home groups or your, your local store groups. And you, you could, it's much more easy. It's easier uh, to convince those guys to be able to run unstable cards in there. You know what I mean? I hope so. I hope so. Because there's, there's a lot of sweet cards in here that are just like super fun. and. Uh, also, I'll be I damned think. if you're not going to stop. You're going to stop me from putting these in my cube. Oh, cube is even, cube is even better. Like I would love to play these with God. Just, just, Someone said X. Someone said X was fun, and she is fun. X is amazing. Well, X is gonna give it to you. She or he? I'm not sure. He, he, definitely. She, she, she. I'm not sure. What, I'm not sure. X is a X, X, X is a card. I had to read four times just to figure out what it was. Yes. I was like, I have no idea what this card is doing. Yes. And yep. it's interesting because the top of it is uh, the part that tells you that, like, whenever it's in an opponent's hand. But then at the bottom, it, that's where it explains to you how it gets in their hand. Yeah, I wish it was. Uh, if it if if, it's, if it gave the abilities first and then the text, I think I would understand it. Oh, better. yeah, it would make a lot more sense. I agree with you. So X X yes. is uh the name is literally just X. It's a legendary creature, human spy. It is a two two for two. As long as X is in X's owner's opponents. Oh my God! See, it's such a word. It's such a hot word. Just mess, read dude. read the abilities first. Read the abilities okay, first. That's I agree. That's so much easier. All right. So it says. As uh, blue black tap, put X into target opponent's hand. Oh, that makes so much more sense when I'm reading the rest of it. Yeah. So for for two mana and tapping this, you can put it into an opponent's hand. For five mana, three blue black, no tap. You may play a card in the same hand as X without paying its mana cost. So that means for five mana, you can play a card in your in the in the the opponent you put this in into their whose hand you put this into <laughs> without paying its mana yeah. cost. And then the, the relevant text is, as long as X is in X's owner's opponent's hand. So if I'm the owner, as long as it's in my opponent's my, hand. In my hand. If, if, if Frank puts X in my you're hand. You're my opponent. Yep, it's my as hand. long as it's in my opponent's hand, which is Ollie. X's owner, which is Frank, may cast and activate X's abilities. <gasps> Wait, hold on. As long as X's owner may cast... X and activate X's abilities. Huh. Yeah. So you can, but okay, so yeah. here's the interesting part. You can cast you can cast X out of my Why do you have you or, why do you have ten you living cast, wishes? Ollie's holding up ten living more. wishes in like heart in like top loaders. Okay. Like, anyway, it keeps going. Hit. That opponent can't cast X, so you can't cast X uh and plays with your hand revealed, which is relevant because then you get to know what, what abilities you're just using, right? Yeah. Or what cards you're casting with the five mana ability. But here's what's interesting to me, because it says, as long as it's in your hand, I can cast X and activate X's ability. Now here's the problem. The the name being X is really confusing because I feel like I'm naming a variable. Absolutely. absolutely. As I I'm reading it, I feel like I'm just reading Fireball. Well, thankfully, it doesn't have an X ability X activation cost or anything. Oh so. my god, that'd be insanely thankfully. confusing. Yeah. Okay, but no, here's the thing yeah. that, that threw me. It says, as long as it's in your hand, I can cast and activate X's abilities. But the first right. ability is what puts it into your hand. So it's almost like saying, it has to be in your hand for me to activate its abilities, but I can't put it in your hand without being able to activate its abilities. You see what I'm saying? So that first part kind of contradicts the first ability. Well, you're kind of confusing me now. I'm what? You, you, you're confusing me. It's in play. I put it, I put it in, in your hand. From your hold hand, on, hold on, hold on. Put it in my, but how are you? But here, hold on, hold on. How are you putting it in my hand? Because it says, as long as it's in your hand, my hand, you can activate its abilities. I'm casting from the command zone. No, how are you putting it in my hand, though? I'm using the ability. I'm casting. I'm casting from the command Stop. zone. You're not listening. It, you're you're not following me. You're not following me here. Okay. The, the first line of text says, as long as it's in your hand. You can cast and activate X's abilities. As long as X is in X's owner's opponent's right. hand. As long as it's in as your hand. As long as it's in my hand, you can activate its abilities. Correct. How are you like activating them if it's not in my hand? It's while it's in play. But it's not in my hand. You can't activate its abilities. I can't. All right. Yeah. You're, no, you're right. That makes sense. I got it. It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a cap. Right. No, no, no. And this is, see, one. this is the, this is, I agree with you. This is how I, I thought it worked. Obviously it works the way it's supposed to work, but I'm playing okay. devil's advocate here because it's a confusing line of text 
and it's kind of a caveat that that insists that like uh it has to be in your hand to activate but it can't get in your hand unless you activate it what does it have to be in your hand you can type any time and just saying you can also activate it while it's in someone's hand so like i can like bounce it you're around right from yeah like... it doesn't say you can only yeah you're right that makes sense Anyway, this card's super confusing, so I hope we uh, hope we helped you guys out and you can figure it out more. Hope you guys know yeah, know what it's super, doing now. Super confusing, like a great human spy. That is. And it's, I'm this I'm is... glad we're here because I'm sure we helped a lot of people out with that. I'm sure it's much clearer now. Or we could, or we just killed them. <laughs> we confused them. To they death. turned it off. They're like, I'm out. This has this we're is done. this Thank is you. this is not in, in my interest. What other cards have you seen? Okay, so I'm a big fan. Hot fix. I was literally. Oh my god, that's exactly the card I was gonna go for. So top yep. fix uh, is a six mana card for white blue. It's a sorcery and it says you have 10 seconds to look at and rearrange the cards in your library. At the end of those 10 seconds, if you're touching one or more of those cards, shuffle your library. That's ridiculous. That's awesome. Cause all you have to do is look for like two or three specific cards, four cards, maybe put them on the top in the order you want. Yeah. But, but, but if you're playing commander, that's gonna be kind of hard. I agree. And do you in cube it's easier in cube I think it's easier but still still uh in commander though you're like oh man ten seconds like w when your opponent casts this you're like resolves one the best part two, um three <laughs> I think I think one of the best parts about this card is that you so it's like it, intuitively every time you look at your deck the last thing you do is shuffle it right. But I like this card because not only do you not have to shuffle it shuffling it is counter it's counterproductive to what you're trying to do. So you can literally yeah. like take your deck, put the cards where you want, and then just put it down. And you're like, okay, I'm done. You don't have to shuffle it afterwards. You don't have to have someone cut it. You just literally look at your deck, put it down. Like that's a, that's a simple thing, but it's something that never happens in magic. You never get to look through your deck and then put it down and play with it right immediately after. There was one card that, that I can't remember what it was. What? Really? What was it? It was like, it was a card that like let you look through the entire deck for some reason, and then you can rearrange it and put it back. Maybe I'm wrong. How do you remember. feel about Animate Library? I think it's sweet, but kind of scary. Animate. Luckily, it luckily has the. Uh, go ahead. I was just gonna say what it was. Animate Library is a four yep. blue blue for an enchantment aura. Enchant your library. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Enchanted Library <laughs> is an artifact creature on the battlefield with power and toughness each equal to the number of cards in it. It's still a library. If Enchanted Library would leave the battlefield, exile Animate Library instead. So that way your opponent can't like disenchant your enchant library or your, your library itself and then you have you lose the game. Which is nice. Or Well they could disenchant the Well they can't like yeah, they can't like Doom Blade your right, library. Because or, then the enchantment would, would leave instead. Yes. You can however like mind control it or steal the library, which is kinda of crazy. <laughs> Oh my god, that seems insane, dude. You could mind control their library. What happens? Do they just lose the next time they have to draw a card? I, I don't know. Cause, well, so if I, if I mind control your library, and it's my, and then I take it on the turn, do I draw two cards? That's unbelievable. What a time Except to be alive. So you know what I love about this set? There's so many cards that I'm reading, and I'm like, how is this not a mythic? That's like completely a mythical card. Like, this ability is broken. So, like, Animate Library, yeah. that'd be a mythic. Hot Fix, what a mythic. But, like, none of yeah. these are actually mythic. They're Like, that's just a regular rare. That's a regular rare. Mm, no big deal. All right, you want to know my favorite card? That's not super absurdly broken, but... Oh, no, Malevolent Loki. We're, Malevolent Loki says it says your library. Yeah, we're not saying you can enchant someone else's library. We're saying you, encha you enchant your library, and someone else mind controls it. So they get to steal your library... Yeah. Wait, and then when when they go to their draw step, can they draw from your library? I guess I guess it's still their library. They own the library, right? So they draw from it. Okay, that makes sense. Maybe. So, so but but when it's my turn, do I draw from my library and your library since like control it? Chris RD19 in chat said Mark Rod Mark Rosewater is writing a 60-page FAQ for this set. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but I would not be surprised if that was the case. Oh man. That's that's insane. All right, the card I like is called Better Than One. This is a green-white sorcery. It says a person outside the game becomes your teammate. Choose any number of cards in your hand. 
on top of your library or on the battlefield under your control, those cards become your teammate's hand, library, and permanence, respectively. Yeah, this card's interesting. I think it's funny because there's a couple cards like this. Um, and a lot of them are dependent on actually having people in the room that aren't also just playing with you. Just call, well, here's what you do. You cast better than one. You go, judge. You're my teammate now. <laughs> but I mean, like, this also presumes that you're at, like, a big event. Wait, okay, so hold on. If you're at an event, like, say you're at a Grand Prix and they're doing unstable side drafts, right? If you oh, do huh. that, if yeah. you call over a judge and ask them to be your teammate, do they have to? I mean, they can, and they, they, they probably just concede. Oh, like, right yeah, away, I right? guess that's true. You do have the option to concede. Yeah. Which would stink, but... Interesting. I haven't seen the Grand Calcutron yet. It is a legendary artifact. It is white and blue. When the Grand Calcutron enters the battlefield, each player's... Uh, what? Each player's hand becomes a program, an ordered row of revealed cards. Players can only play the first card of their program. If a card would be put into a player's hand from anywhere, that player reveals it and places it anywhere within his or her program instead. At the beginning of each player's end step, if that player's program has fewer than five cards, he or she draws cards equal to the difference. Wow. This card is insane. Wait, what? So you lay out all your cards. Okay. There, it's an ordered row of revealed cards, right? So if I have six cards in my hand, I put my six cards in a row face up. Because they're revealed. Okay. Uh, and then, from the, for the rest of the game, for as long as this is in play, you can only play the first card in your row. What if you, what if you have a land? You can't play it? Yeah, I would hope you put your, your lands in the front. Okay. Oh, that's weird. If a card would be put into a player's hand from anywhere, that player reveals it and places it anywhere within the... Okay, so, so if, if you, you draw a land, land, you can, can put, put it to the front, the front of, your, of your program. Okay, and that's then good. play that's that good. next, right? So, um, but the problem is, if you have two lands in hand, do you put them both in the front? Do you, if you have like a three drop and a four drop, do you go land three drop land four drop? It's that's interesting. This is an interesting card, and this seems like it's super fun. This is good in storm. Uh, so actually, Chris RD just posted a link to Blogatog, which is Mark Rosewater's Tumblr. So you guys can check that out. It's Mark Rosewater Tumblr. Actually, it's Mark Rosewater Tumblr com. Super easy. Um, I was planning to ask if you already knew which cards are going to generate the most unrules questions a la Cheaty Face's R&D secret layer, Cheaty Face slash R&D secret layer, but then I saw Rules Lawyer, way to create work for yourself. Mark responds, the FAQ is 60 pages and no way I hit everything. Oh my God. So I guess there is going to be a 60 page FAQ for Unstable and that sounds utterly ridiculous. Man. This set looks so fun. Like, I'm super impressed no, by does. this set. Like, it's unbelievable. Like, I don't think I've actually had this much interest in previous unsets. But this one, I'm just like... If I buy a pack of this, I'm going to love everything in this pack. I'm going to love these wacky cards. I'm going to love being able to put them in my cube. Did you hear all the tokens? There's, like, foil tokens in this set? Yeah, each each pack has a foil token and a full art yeah. land. What? Yeah, it's Are awesome, these right? retail? What's the retail price on these packs? Do we know? I'm not sure. But 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 the but if you open a foil land, that's gotta be worth like what, twenty, thirty dollars at least? Sarah C posted in the chat, she said, Here's pack one, pick one for me. It is it is a card called Go to Jail. It is an enchantment for one white mana. When Go to Jail enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until Go to Jail leaves the battlefield. Okay, so like a journey to nowhere. At the yeah. beginning of the upkeep of the exiled card's owner, that player rolls two six-sided dice. If he or she rolls doubles, sacrifice, go to jail. Okay, cool. So it's basically Monopoly, where like if you Monopoly. roll doubles, you go to yeah. jail. That's it's a great flavor. That's awesome. Oh, also Kind Slaver. You see that? You saw that? I did see Kind Slaver. See again, this is a card that's like it references someone outside of the game. Yeah. So like, yeah. but if you're like, if if it's you and me, and you know we're just playing, and then Amberly's in the room, and you're like. Hey, Amberly, can you make these decisions for Frank? Like, does the person have to know magic? Probably not. Interesting. And we can't help them. You probably say, hey, control his turn. So someone said a box is 100, 36 pack box is 100, and it's normal price standard. So apparently, like, you know, a lot of local stores have like three packs for 10 bucks, you know, like $3, $3 ish. 
That's crazy, oh. dude. Oh, I think the full art lands look amazing. Full, uh, Iron Chef Sammy said you like the full art lands. I think they look incredible. Oh, yeah, I do too. I, 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 one thing I dislike, I wish they did not have the name on the, on the, of the land on top. I wish it, it was just full art. Like, take the plain island swamp. Mountain, I don't think forest. you can have lands like that without names. You, you just can't have. You have to have a name on a card. No, aren't the unglued lands like that? Do they have names? Oh my god, maybe they don't. Oh, they do. Yeah, they do have a name it's on, on them. the upper left. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't think you can actually have a card that doesn't have a name on it because then it's you don't want to leave that that kind of ambiguity in the game, even if you know definitively, because then you're solely relying on art, and why? There's just well, no reason to do that. Well, in that case, just take away the, the stupid, the silly, different color border. Just put plain I mean, on top. To I be guess. honest, just take the way the they're John Avon full art lands. They, I think they look just as good, if not better, than the unhinged lands, which is those have been my standard go-to lands for a long for the longest time. I think my big yeah. concern is that like. And this is a silly concern, of course, but my concern is that like unhinged and unglued were both sets that weren't really appreciated at their time. I don't think where this set is in a different era. I mean, the marketing is better. Multiplayer magic is better. Uh, lands are better. So all kinds of things. There's all these factors that may make this that that seem to that, like this set is going to be significantly more popular than unhinged or unglued. And because of that, I worry that just everyone's going to be playing with unstable lands. It's just unstable lands forever now. Uh, my favorite was uh, ungl unglued for the longest time. I think they still are. I just like that when I, I play, like, I love... un my unhinged lands are like, I'm the only one that has these. Everyone else has different lands. These are my, like, these are the lands I choose, and I like these a lot. And now I'm just worried that everyone yeah. else is going to be using unstable. It's going to be just all mono, un seas of unstable lands. And well, I like so diversity expensive. in lands. What? They're kind of hard to get. They're still kind of hard to get. Like, each one's like three bucks. No, no, no I'm still. talking about unstable. I'm talking about the new ones. I know. They're still like $3 each. I mean, the, they're the price they of the, the pack? pack. That's so what? Well, that, that's the point of the pack. Are you like, talking about pre price, pre, pre order price? I think so, if I'm not mistaken. That's so weird. Wrong, that doesn't think... make any sense. I would just buy the packs, right? I mean, the, maybe, I mean, I, I haven't seen anywhere lower than two dollars. Really? I mean, I haven't looked. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I haven't looked at any of the prices, so I have no idea what the price point is. But um. Yeah, that'd be super weird to me if that was the case because that doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, my favorite is still unglued just because they're they're the first and they're kind of classy in a way. Yeah, if you have so enough like, to make to have like play sets of them, that's cool. Yeah, I do. Like, I think I have enough. I have enough unhinged unless I want to do like a mono colored deck with like twenty swamps in it. But I have like right, I have right. between like eleven to fifteen um, of each of each unhinged land, which is just perfect for any deck. Like a lot of decks are like three swamps, two islands, one mountain, whatever. So it's yeah. way more than enough. Malevolent Loki said, you don't like diversity. You were playing with only un unlands from one set. You said so yourself. Oh, <laughs> you'd play Zendikars too. If you like diverse, that's fair. I guess that's true. I'm just a, I'm just an old timer and I'm stuck in my, my Zen, my unhinged ways. That's all. Uh, ha 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 ha. I do also like the new. I don't, I don't, what uh, are you laughing at there? Was there a, was there a joke that I made that I didn't realize I made? Yeah, you said you're stuck in your un something about un unhinged ways. Yeah, unhinged. It's unset. Yeah, because those are the lands I'm using. I was literally referring to my the unhinged but lands. I was your using. unhinged ways because you're. You know what? We're mo mo moving on. Go on. Moving on. Okay. Okay, so have you seen this Urza Academy Headmaster? Yes. Yes, I have. And I'm completely uncomfortable with it. Yeah. It's not It's not comfortable. It's Yeah, I'll, I'll say the same thing. It's very... Uh... It's not good. It's, it's not good. Literally his head, yeah. and he's dead. Ask If you guys haven't done so, go to askurza.com. And but everything says come back later. Right, but right. it's still a, a site you can check. And it says Urza yeah. Academy Headmaster. It is a legendary Planeswalker Urza. And I'm really hoping that this is not... Like, I hope there's another Urza Planeswalker coming, especially because we're going to Dominaria soon. I really want to see an Urza Planeswalker. I know he's dead. I understand. Um, I think. I think he's dead. I think that's how the lore goes. You know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, his head... Well, he... he his, he, He's dead. <laughs> okay, well, we'll keep it at that. So, 
Urza Academy Headmaster, it's Reaper King, not Reaper King, um, like Scion of a Dragon, one of each color mana. So white, blue, black, red, green, five mana. And it, he okay. has a plus one ability, a negative one ability, and a negative six ability. And the card, and it starts with four loyalty. And the card on the site says, select the loyalty ability you're using. And then, yep. like, the flavor text is, whether fighting Phyrexians, founding the Talarian Academy, or just enjoying retirement, Urza always kept his head. Which is super weird, because the art is literally like an Urza head on a spring and a crank, and it's... A crank? It's, a, it's, it's awkward just, it's art, morbid. Man. It's really creepy. It's morbid. And so I'm going to click the negative six, because it says, select the loyalty ability you're using. And it says, Urza is powering up. Check back December 8th. So I wonder if people vote on... When does when does the sec, sec come out? I bet you they're all random. I bet you like you just he, he probably has like ten plus abilities, ten minus abilities, and ten minus six abilities. How how would that work though? Or like five for each color. This is random. You just click on it and it gives you random ability. Right, but how would that work as far as phone. the real card? You pull up your phone. You're like I'm gonna plus this. You're like all right, I I I, I got this ability. You trade and you trade your opponent. Like maybe the plus one is like draw a card, gain two life, and you show to your, your opponent. This is this is this is what I got. It's weird that they. I, okay, I like that idea. I think that's really that's some good thinking outside the box. Um, however, I don't think they like the idea of you having to have a a device with you that can access the internet to use a card. Maybe maybe call a judge over. I have no idea. Judge. But see, like I'm you're implying that all of your events with unstable are going to be taking place at a big event. And you're always going to have judges present. Some people just want to play this at, like, the local Denny's or something. Well, man. I mean, that's fine. Well, in that case, then a, phone, a phone is fine. I mean, you're like, hey, I pulled pull my phone. I got I to use this buddy. At that point, that's fine. Right? Like, it's not sanctioned. I mean, un unsets aren't sanctioned, so pulling out your phone for Earth's ability should be fine. Well, you're not sanctioned either, so suck on that. Yeah, judge, give me your phone. I don't, my phone does not have Wi-Fi. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh man. Luckily, it's a mythic. It's a mythic, so I may have probably pulled it's less. It's super interesting to see a mythic planeswalker in an unset, though. Like, that's kind of funny. Yeah. Like, this whole set looks funny. pretty ridiculous, and I'm looking really, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it more so than I thought I would be. Like, yeah. this. Do you know who cut, do you know who cut up Urza's head? Gerard. Really? Yeah, Gerard card cut up Urza's head in the Phyrexian Arena because they're forced to fight oh, by Yawgmoth. Phyrexian Arena's, yeah, like the art on Phyrexian Arena. Yeah, the art on Phyrexian Arena, the art on Phyrexian Arena is literally Urza and Gerard fighting yeah. to the death. That's insane. Death. Yep. I had no idea, man. You're welcome. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> thank you, but okay. Well, I'm saying you're welcome. Do you like, how do you feel about summon? Yeah, ha hashtag, hashtag spoilers. <laughs> how do you feel about summon the pack? Seven, seven colorless, one black. It's sorcery. Open a sealed magic booster pack, reveal the cards, and put all creature cards revealed this way onto the battlefield. There are zombies in addition to other types. That's sweet. Also, interesting. You know card? I want to say the most powerful card in the set is definitely over my dead bodies. Oh, where it's like, um, yeah, that card's interesting too. Let me find that, that bad boy. Certainly powerful. Over my dead bodies, four black black for an enchantment. Creature cards in graveyards can attack and block as though they were on the battlefield. Can block or be blocked only by creature cards in graveyards. Are zombies in addition to their other types and have undeath undeath touch. If they would deal damage yeah. to a creature card, exile that creature card instead. Creature cards in your graveyard have haste. This is so much text, dude. It's yeah, it is a lot of text. So, what I was going to say, um, uh -huh. uh, it's interesting because you have some in the pack, which requires you to have a booster pack from outside the game. Um, so, maybe actually having an app or having a phone is not that much out of the question. You know what I mean? Or, you just, or maybe maybe just buy a booster pack. Okay, give, give me a booster pack of, 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 of uh, legions. Legions, please. Open it up. Wasn't Legions like all creatures? Uh, Legions was all creatures, yes, and that's that's like the the default go to pack that people are talking about when uh, when mentioning which pack you're going to open with summon summon the pack. There you go. You just 
bring if you have like three packs of legion on some of the pack is also a great name like you're summoning the booster pack that's that's a great name this whole set is super impressive like it's not only just like it doesn't only look fun it actually looks super impressive like i'm actually impressed with this set with how clever it is and like how like it, it uses so many external mechanics you know what i mean yeah 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 it's it's crazy I got three yes for Ali and Trazi. You got a what? You said yeah. 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 I got three yes yeah. from you. Phoebe, Head of Sneak. I haven't seen this yet. One blue-black for a 2-3. Two, three. So three mana. It is a legendary a creature, human spy. Phoebe, Head of Sneak, can't be blocked by creatures with flavor text. She has flavor text, which is kind of funny. Uh, for two blue-black, Phoebe permanently steals target creature's text box. That creature loses all rules, text, flavor text, and watermarks. This creature gains them. That's insane. How do you do? How do you keep track of that? You just take take a piece of paper and write Emrakul the Ons Torn and put it on okay. her. Okay. Oh, actually, I mean, I guess that's a way to do it. Yeah. And then, oh my God, her flavor well, text. I, I guess. Uh, I said her flavor text says this space intentional yeah. left blank. That's great. Oh my God, yeah, that's this gas, wonderful. dude. Before someone says anything, I know. I'm glad pro colors. I got it. No, they will. They'll say it. They'll they'll leave it in the comments this week. They'll be like, mm, but yeah. Ali, um, Emrakul has protection from all the colors, don't you know? <laughs> yes. And you're gonna be like, I've always wanted to see you say that in what you sounded like, <laughs> what your face was like. like this, so well. now I know. But Ali, well, Emrakul has protection from colors. You see. <laughs> I always thought it was like this. Let me show you. Manali, <laughs> every glass picture from the colors you see. I can't. You gotta like put them up. You gotta but... push them up though. I know. You gotta, you gotta put them down like Granny, like Granny style. Yeah, but then you gotta push them up because that's what that's the nerd. I gotta. Yeah. All right. All right Come all right, on. Okay. Get the get it together. All right. Uh, yeah. So. Um, yeah, don't, yeah, obviously you can't target Emrakul, but Emrakul would be the ideal creature to, uh, to steal the, the text from. Sure. Yeah, this set looks sweet. I'm excited about it. It's. Did you see there were also two uh, Our House Rivals? Rivals of Ixalan? Is that the set? I can't. I could not think of the name. I could not think of the... Rivals of the Houses. Ri I was yeah, thinking of like Hours, so. Hour of Death. No, that's Hour of Station. Oh, they spoiled, they spoiled the Immortal Sun, which is crazy. I thought I was the Immortal Sun at first. No, you're not. Yeah. This is the card that both is after, and they spoiled, they spoiled it. Also... Tetzimok, uh Death Primordial, it looks like. Oh, it says Morte Primordial, but I, I assume that's just Primordial of Death. Death Primordial. Primordial. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this text is apparently, it is a six mana, four and black black, for a legendary Elder Dinosaur, which is super sweet. It has Death yeah. Touch. Yeah. Because when you're a six six, you need Death Touch. You got to make sure you kill all the seven sevens. Um, yeah. One black mana and reveal this from your hand. Put a prey counter on target creature. Only activate this during your turn. So you can go during your turn. You can be like death counter, death counter, pre prey counter, prey counter, prey counter, prey counter. Go. And the thing is, they can't. They can play a guy, and you can't put a death a prey counter on that guy uh, before your next turn. So if you only have like four or five mana, and then on turn six you want to play this guy, you can't kill their most recently played guy. But he does. He says. When it enters the battlefield, destroy all creatures with prey counters on them. And it's a 6-6. Six, six. This yeah. card seems good, though. It seems sweet. Sweet Commander with, like, the, uh... Or, what's the one that taps for a bunch of black mana? Do you can remember Swampsy Control? Block, block Offers? Yes, that is correct. That is the land. Yeah, you just cut Block Offers and, like, target everything. Like, alright. This card's interesting because, everything. like, on turn one and two and three, like, if you don't have things to do, or if you play, like, a two drop on turn three, you can be like, uh, put a prey counter on this guy with my extra mana. Turn four, put three prey counters on guys, and then you just play this guy and kill all their stuff. Yeah, it's inter interesting, too, because if, you know, if, 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 like, I play this and target your creature in a commander game or something, like... Are you going to play any more creatures? Or are you, are you just going to stop? Yeah, because once you, know? you see it, what do you do? Yeah, it's interesting. Right? Like, do you just keep playing your guys? Or are you like, oh, this is awkward? Because you're basically, it's like they're playing guys, and every turn you show them Wrath of God. You're like, oh, I have Wrath of God. And then they're like, all yeah. right, play my four drop. And you're like, still got Wrath of God. And it's kind of like this awkward game you're playing. That's yeah, interesting. Absolutely. 
And the other card that was revealed is a card called Immortal Sun, which Ollie just mentioned. Uh, it is a legendary artifact, also costs six mana. So they revealed two legendary cards that both cost six. And it says, players can't activate loyalty abilities of Planeswalkers. That's an interesting ability. At the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card. That's an interesting ability. Very uh, Staff yeah. of Nin. Spells you yeah. cast cost one less to cast. Okay. That's... Yeah. And creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So this card does it all. And also Staff of Nin is one of the, the cards that where it's like, this cards that are similar to this. Underneath it says Staff of Nin and Cage Sun, both of which are are very similar to this. This card has a lot going on. It does. It does. Um, it seems very good in like a Locust God type deck because Locust God can actually use, use all the abilities. Yeah, the plus one plus. Well, not the, the spells. you. Well, actually, yeah, I guess so. I mean... I mean, like the, the, the extra card is extra Locust. Right. The plus one plus one is good for Locust. Goes locusts. Yeah, I agree. I yeah. can see playing this and then playing Locust God the next turn or vice versa even. God, yeah, it's so much mana, but not not uh, not as long as teamers around. I mean, but... you and I are not strangers to spending a lot of mana for things, so. No, that's true. But uh... the only problem, the only problem too, is like uh, it dies to a braid. Like I wish, a, like I hate cards like a braid because they're like I just like Jermokos Command because it was just a good card, a good removal spell that also killed enchantments. Right. For some reason, I just like a braid because it's a good, it's a good removal it spell. It just does, yeah, it does too many things very, very well. You're yeah, not penalized yeah. for playing a braid, even if they have no artifacts. Correct. Yeah, I agree with you. I I, I think the same thing. I'm like, Jeroka's Command is just good and versatile on its own. And the fact that it also disincentivizes people from playing enchantments is just a net negative, I think. I agree. Also, thank you, Shocktopus. He said, congrats on your top eight finish. Nice. Hey, man. Congrats on your top eight finish. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. On to that note, it's been about, it's almost an hour, we're at 56 minutes now, which is probably uh, a good time to wrap things up, I guess. All right. I think this is a good, uh, a good, a good trial run for the live podcast. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. If you guys have enjoyed it, be sure to uh, follow, subscribe, like, hit up some, hit us up on Patreon. You can go to uh, Fresh, Patreon, I always get it wrong. I always start with Freshly Brewed. Patreon.com slash Freshly Brewed. Uh, you can contribute as much as, as as little as a dollar per episode, and it helps us out because then we have a reason to do this and uh, try to improve the quality week after week. Also, any two dollars subscribers get access to the um, freshly brewed Discord channel, uh, which is some things I've we've been trying to do. I've, I also have one for my Twitch subscribers, so I've been going Discord crazy. But it's cool to be able to like interact with people outside of like a stream. And uh, Discord's actually a great app. I'm really surprised that like it's as good as it is because you can have it on your phone, like you can have it on your desktop and it's all connected so it's pretty cool you can have it everywhere you can have it everywhere anywhere you want it that's the way you need it anywhere you want that's it a, that's actually that's a great way to tell how you uh you let the podcast go for about 15 seconds too long i think yep yeah yeah you got, you got it you got to all right well on that note thank you guys so much for listening we'll see you next time thanks for listening and watching we'll see you next time <laughs>